Another game here, once again, courtesy of Mac driving the AT2. So this time we have jumped up to tier 5. Mac is using the 6 pounder gun, which is a 57 millimeter gun. Um, you know, low damage per shot, all right penetration, slightly dubious accuracy, blistering rate of fire. It's basically how the gun works. Now, this is Fiery Salient, or as it's otherwise known, Reskin Prokhorovka, which is a very, very open map, favouring tanks with mobility, gun depression, turret armour, view range. And the AT2 has no mobility, gun depression, no turret, and garbage view range. So this is perhaps not the best map for this tank. That's a little bit of an understatement. Having said that, Mac is top tier, and in terms of tiers, this is very nice matchmaking indeed. There are only two tier 5s per side, a KV-1S and an AT2 in each case. A few tier 4s, and then a good half of each team are composed of tier 3. So bad matchmaking if you're one of those tier 3s, good if you're one of the tier 5s. Um, and the other thing worth noting is that there is no artillery in this game, which is good from Mac's perspective because this thing is slow and has a massive dumper bomb on my head sign painted on the top of it, or it might as well do. It really doesn't like artillery. So this is an encounter game, the cap circle is over here on the um, east of the map, I guess, the right hand side of the map, the 7, 8, 9 and 0 lines, and so you can kind of say within a little the rest of the map's almost irrelevant. I mean it's not irrelevant but this is the most important end of the map. It is entirely possible for one team to rush the cap and win the game getting about 200 experience each um, which is a rubbish result for everybody concerned so let's not have that. Now Mac is still trundling over here. The game has been going good two minutes and he's just about made it to the hill. This gives you an idea for how slow this machine is. Now, we had the Valentine AT before, and that was certainly no speed demon, but really, this is very pedestrian. I've got some other replays up from the Electo at Tier 4, so that's between, ooh, KV-1S, between the Valentine AT and the uh, AT2 here. Um, and really, that's the anomaly. Your, and Tier 2. Your Tier 2 British TD is fairly mobile, no armour. Tier 3, less mobile, armor's still pretty bad. Tier 4, go back to being mobile with terrible armor. Tier 5 to 9, the armor becomes better and the mobility suffers. And Tier 10, well, they've recently changed that. Um, but tier 10 is different again. Anywho, while I was yabbering on, Mac polished off that KV-1S and then proceeded to bounce on this Valentine AT. Now, the Valentine's armor, I mean, if you hit it in the hull, it's the armor of a Valentine light tank, um, which is not completely terrible. Um, but you do also have that gun shield on the thing that you can just put HE round straight through. And Mac picks up his second kill. So, so far, he's eliminated one of the tier 5s on the enemy team, but they've also lost their KV-1S, so there we go and one of the tier threes. Now here is one of the problems with the AT2. View range absolutely sucks. So people can see Mac, they're even shooting at him but he can't see them. But at this sort of range they're never going to penetrate uh, the AT2 without a horrific amount of luck. So SU-85B, very dangerous machine. Um, by the look of it as of patch 9.6 going to become rather less dangerous but in this replay. It is a very dangerous machine. All the tier 4 tank destroyers are nasty little blighters. Generally speaking with excellent view range and pretty darn scary guns. And some pretty respectable mobility too. Speaking of tier 4 tank destroyers, there's the M8A1. And by looking at his silhouette, I think he's stock. He's using the, well, he appears to be using the little 75mm howitzer that you also get on the M5 Stuart. Or I should say that you used to get on the Stuart, you don't anymore. One shot into him, two shots. Another two shots should kill this guy. Misses that one. And there we go, someone else tracks him and he polishes the fellow off. And SU-85B. Now Mac could be sitting still to aim these shots a bit more carefully, 
<clears throat> at these sort of engagement ranges, it's very unlikely anyone's going to hit his weak spots, so he probably doesn't need to worry about moving so much. And indeed, that's what he does in the end, and polishes the guy off for kill number four. Now he's taken ten damage so far, which makes me think someone is spamming high explosive ammo in his general direction. Um, and he's taken some track damage, so it might be that M2 medium. Maybe that M2 medium's using the howitzer. No, no, he's using the 37mm gun, and this guy is completely screwed. He's totally outclassed. Even if that guy could get around to max rear, and even if he spammed complete APCR, total premium ammunition, I'm not convinced he'd be able to take Mac down. So, DW2. Oh, yeah, someone, I think, is firing HEAM. DW2, um, the tank in and of itself is not great. It's not the complete travesty that a lot of people seem to think, but it's definitely not a joy to play. AT2, and from these engagement ranges, this is a very tough proposition, but manages to get a shot into the side. But the accuracy on this gun just uh, means that it is not cut out for your classic tank destroyer engagements. That feels like an auto cannon, and you're getting an idea of the all-round armor of the AT2, but it should be emphasized in a good matchup. If there were some more tier 5s around, his side armor um, would probably fail him once or twice. So just trying to get some damage onto the side of this AT2. The thing with the AT2 is that you really want to hit it in this side of the, well, if it had a turret that sort of superstructure turret area because if you hit it um, in the side of the main body then you also have the tracks that are in the way being a pain so for these shots I would recommend either aiming specifically for that I mean look at this guy aiming specifically for that um, upper part of the machine or switching to APCR DW2 is behind Mac um, He's using the 50mm gun, which is in my opinion the best gun on that tank, but in that sort of situation you really want to load the APCR. Um, just suck it up and load the premium ammunition, because even flanking the AT2 he isn't going to do a great deal to him. And Mac is just going to take this guy apart, doesn't get the kill, but whatever. Just tanking shots with his bum. Someone's plinking at him, that'll be the AT2 down there, and there's just the AT2 and Panzer 1C. Panzer 1C is never going to penetrate him in a month of Sundays. Um, and so it's just the AT2 that Mac really needs to worry about. And he's got a Hetzer as support. They should have this, due in no small part to Mac's heroics and the AT2 bouncing everything and its wife. Can anyone else sense an incoming steel wall? <laughs> so, Panzer 1C actually nails that Hetzer. Presumably flanking shots, rear shots. Um, but seriously, Mac does not have to worry about that guy. Incoming 82, shots at the top. With 110 millimeters of average penetration, just... It's not actually a reliable pen, that commander's hatch. And as you can see, even at these engagement ranges, the... Um, gun is not very accurate. There we go. Shot straight through the gun. That is a weak part of the tank. If you can get it in just the right point and one more to finish this guy off. I would be switching to APCR at this point just to really make sure you kill him. And there we go. Mac eventually takes the guy down. Panzer 1C. He's behind Mac but frankly Mac could just drive into the cap circle and there isn't a great deal of much that the Panzer could do to him. Which is exactly what he appears to be doing. And there we go. And Mac is just sitting here capping. Now, alas, the Panzer 1C being in the cap circle at the same time, well, it would result in this being a draw, I guess, if it went on long enough. Um... And so I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Because at the moment they're having a little bit of a Barney. Five <laughs> this is a little bit ridiculous. Ready to fire. Target 
And finally, the Panzer 1C runs away. <laughs> Panzer 1C says, okay, I give up. And... Three minutes left. Mac, yeah, he's run out of ammunition. The enemy Panzer has run out of ammo. And there we go. Mac caps out the game. So... That was an Invader Medal, Top Gun, Steel Wall that I counted. There may well have been something else thrown in there for good measure. That was the AT-2. Third game of this compilation will step up a tier into the AT-8. A rather different machine, despite being part of the same sort of design philosophy. Here we go with the third replay of the trio, and again we've moved up a tier once more. Uh, the Mac is now driving the 88 tier 6 tank destroyer from the original tank destroyer line, of course, not the new shiny medium slash TD line with the the Archer and the Achilles and all of that jazz. So this is Sand River. This is not the best map for this tank. Sand River is a map that favours tanks with mobility, gun depression, view range, and the AT-8 has absolutely none of the above. This is also an assault game. Again, not fantastic. Mac is on the attacking team, which means that really Mac wants to get a wiggle on and drive over towards the enemy team, which is a bit of a pain because this thing does 20, count them, 20 kilometers per hour, which is, not to put too fine a point on it, abysmal. There's a reason that a lot of people don't like this machine. And that it's generally seen as a downgrade from the AT-2 at Tier 5. But, nonetheless, we deal with that which we have to deal with. So this is a Tier 6 game, which means that max armour does have some meaning, unless your opponent is competent and knows to aim for the giant commander's tower. Um, sitting on top of the tank. Or, if you've watched my review of this thing, one half, basically, or one third of the front of this machine, which is made of paper. Which can be quite frustrating, but against people who are not very experienced and don't really know what they're doing, the frontal armour on this, from range, can be quite nice. Also has a nice hit point pool, but it doesn't take artillery well. There is an artillery in this game. There's only one, which is good, but it's a tier 6 artillery, which is less good. So if that hits Mac, that can really put him in a whole world of hurt. Now Max come over to this uh, central ridgeline region, which is understandable. From here, hopefully you can pour shots in onto the enemy team, including where the enemy tank destroyers tend to like to camp at the back there. But, having said that, on the enemy team there is only a single tank destroyer. It's that Hell Kitty. So Mac is, I assume... Yep, using the 17 pounder gun, so he's got 171 millimeters of penetration, 150 average damage, and hopefully um, you haven't found the time too boring as Mac got into position as I ramble on trying to fill the time. So, Mac has found a KV-1S to shoot at, and the KV-1S is now tier 5, and Mac's just happily putting these shots straight through the front of this guy's turret. Takes a bit of track damage from a couple of people, but nothing to really concern. Uh, himself with. And this KV-1S, I mean really, he needs to run away. Somehow that bounced. Not really sure how. Ooh, someone managed to get some damage on Mac, but he finishes off the KV-1S. Seriously, standing in front of an 88, I know it's not a great machine, but it's just standing in front of an 88 like that and letting him farm you is a terrible idea. KV-1 over in the distance. Using the howitzer, which is actually frustrating because you can't bounce those HE shells. Ah well. Hello VK, how are you today? Not looking so hot, are you? Oh well. And this is the sort of thing that the 88 does. It just sits there and nickel and dimes you to death. And people don't respect the gun on this tank. Which I think is silly because for my money this is one of the best guns to be mounted on a tier 6 tank destroyer. 
Mac takes another hit there from the T-150. I do wonder if that T-150 is also firing high explosive ammo, but I don't know. Um, one nice thing about this tank is that the side and rear armour is pretty good, meaning that enemies who flank you in, often lower tier light and medium tanks, think they've suddenly got you banged to rights, only to find that every single shot they fire bounces as you casually ignore them and kill all their friends. Hopefully kill all their friends anyway. <laughs> now, Mac has picked up two kills. And this whole flank of the map is looking a little bit dubious, but his team is winning six kills to four. Thankfully, his team is playing relatively aggressively. It's so easy to screw up um, games where you are assaulting the enemy base by just sitting there and, well, not really doing a great deal of much. Right, of these two priorities, Mac really needs to prioritise the KV-1 as he's packing HE. There's not really much point wiggling here. Because this guy is loading high explosive ammo, um, really Mac just needs to sit still and make the most of his rate of fire. So if I were to offer a little bit of advice in that situation, that's what it would be. I would say that's one of those situations where you don't really want to keep moving. Now, Churchill 3 here appears to know what he's doing, as in he is aiming for Mac's commander's tower or penthouse suite. Um, and the Churchill just goes to a better place. So, scoreline is 10-5. There's only five of them left. We've got that T-150, who's been shooting at Mac all darn game. KV-85 appears to be over on the... was over on the other flank before, before he got taken out by a friendly aerial. There's also that Hellcat somewhere, the Hummel somewhere, and an M7 who snuck his way behind Mac. Speaking of the Hellcat... There he is. So, Hellcat's armour is bad enough that Mac could load high explosive here. Um, but I can understand if he doesn't want to. Uh, the high explosive from this gun gets 38mm penetration, which should be enough for the Hellcat, but if the shot doesn't go quite where he aims it, it goes high and hits the turret, or it explodes on the tracks or something, it won't penetrate and do full damage, thereby kind of defeating the point of firing it in the first place. And Mac did want to keep moving in that situation because he didn't want the Hellcat to just snipe his commander's penthouse. Alas, he takes an artillery shell to the bum there, which is not optimal, and the M7 is going to circle him, and there isn't really much Matt can do about it. Unless this guy crashes into a rock. <laughs> but he has friends, and the M7 dies. And the guy tried to put shots into Max flank, but that's what I was saying about the side armour of this tank. It managed to bounce them. Mac only comes a cropper when the artillery reloads and plants another 150mm love package onto his face. Or actually, up his backside. And there we go. Alas, Mac meets his maker. So, just to uh, speed this along a little bit. There's only the Hellcat left. And there we go. The game ends there as Mac leaves. So that ended up being a very nice game there in the 88. I hope you enjoyed that trio of games showcasing uh, some of the mid-tier tanks, low to mid-tier tanks from the original British Tank Destroyer line. If you did like it, please feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.